Hi, I'd like to present the case for why a very important wireless technology, Wi-Fi, should also be con considered in our 6G discussions. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So most of us are aware about some of the things I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi, but I would say Wi-Fi is a remarkable wireless success story because it spans a variety of devices. Practically most of our connected devices these days, and especially for indoors and in similar environments, say planes, trains, automobiles, etc., I'm spanning a gamut of applications, whether it is data all the way up to carrier voice and a lot of IoT is all happening over Wi-Fi. And so that is why I call it a significant wireless success story because it has spanned applications, devices, and so on. And there are lots of stats talking about the significance of Wi-Fi in terms of the traffic it carries over the last several meters. And those are growing. And in fact, several studies say very high percentage of traffic does look at Wi-Fi as the access from the last meters perspective. What about some numbers which uh, sort of corroborate that view? One is we have typically about 4 billion chipsets coming out for Wi-Fi every year. And the perceived economic value, and we'll talk about why this is important, is trillions of dollars. And I'm sure most of you have used it for your um, enterprise applications and so on, which have economic impact. Not only that, we use it for e-commerce and so on from a personal space, which also has an uh, economic impact. I would say default, it is the primary global connection for traffic indoors. We are not saying Wi-Fi can replace cellular, etc. from the outdoors perspective, but indoors Wi-Fi is definitely the king. And the numbers of chipsets, the number of devices in use, the applications, all this is really staggering. Even the mobile phone, which is the, I would say, singular successful device from the cellular perspective, attaches itself to Wi-Fi in a significant manner. This is a study from one of the markets, but other markets have reported even higher percentage data. So apart from most of our connected devices like laptops, TVs, smart speakers, lots of indoor IoT devices, etc. Whether it is home, enterprise, ships, planes, cars, etc. Uh, we also have the smartphone connecting to Wi-Fi and the smartphone is not just using it for streaming and other applications, but for the critical Wi-Fi calling application, which is which has solved many indoor voice related challenges across the globe. So these numbers and some of the opinions hopefully give us or set the stage for why Wi-Fi is very important as we look at the future of the wireless world. So has Wi-Fi evolved? Yes. And in fact, just to have a step above cellular, we are today in the era of Wi-Fi 7. So you can say 7G and um, We've had, you know, uh, interesting technologies which we use in cellular, OFDM, MIMO, OFDM-A, beamforming, multi-user MIMO. All these are also parts of Wi-Fi standards being used effectively in products in our homes, offices, and so on. And the next generation Wi-Fi 8 is already in the works. I'll talk about that a little towards the end, okay? So, Technology from the bit rates perspective already is several tens of gigabits per second peak, which means the realistic products have already hit gigabit per second uh, in our homes and offices. The rates and speeds are not the only things. In fact, Wi-Fi has got a bad rap, uh, especially when people sometimes compare it with cellular that, oh, Wi-Fi security is lax, etc. This is not entirely true. When you look at enterprise deployment of Wi-Fi, 
it's as secure as anything that you can see in the network world. Otherwise, as you can imagine, security conscious enterprises would not deploy Wi-Fi. And you can be sure that your banks, your consultancies, um, so many other critical businesses are using Wi-Fi to connect their employees, guests, and so on to the network resources, okay? So latest generation security with evolutions are being deployed. So where is the bad rap for security coming? It's mostly from home and certain, you can say self-deployed Wi-Fi in coffee shops and so on, that people have observed some bad practices. But as I said, this is also a trade-off from the ease of use perspective versus you can say some of the complex things that you can deploy. So while enterprises have taken extreme measures and used all the features, some of the home deployments and so on have not used those features for some good reasons. However, Wi-Fi is looking that ang at that angle closely, so much so that even if you leave your network open, that will be encrypted. So that is the level of encryption that we are going to see in Wi-Fi going ahead. And this is going to become mandatory for the future that even if you decide to leave your network open, we can protect, okay? And you know, as, as one can imagine, this will be an ongoing area. So we're already in 256 bit key encryption world. So things are going to get even more sophisticated. Even the IoT over Wi-Fi is getting more secure. Not only that, the IoT over Wi-Fi has an interesting application layer intervention called Matter, which is now enabling the IoT to interact with a variety of application layer ecosystems. Because ultimately, remember that the applications have to work smoothly over these IoT devices. So for the first time, we are not talking about IoT from a wireless perspective, we are talking about from how users will be able to control and manage that IoT. There is a lot of talk about ISAC in the 6G world. Wi-Fi already has products out in the market. Standards are close to completion. So which means all these indoor sensing, location, ranging, awareness is already something that you can envisage in current products and in the future generations going to be standardized and probably much more interoperable, okay? Whether it will become important application is only time will tell. Multiple bands that we will use for Wi-Fi are getting aggregated in some latest generation technologies. Many uh, people wonder about mesh usage. Yes, it's real in our homes and some enterprise deployments, Wi-Fi mesh is operating. In all this, of course, there are still some challenges and improvements that have to happen. I think there is no doubt about it. And one of the challenges for Wi-Fi, which has a solution but needs a lot of implementation, is how do we connect securely and seamlessly first time to networks, okay? Whether it's public networks, uh, it could be even the home networks which want to let in guests, how do we do that? I think technology is there. People are trying very hard to get people to use it. So that I think has, you know, is a very important part of the Wi-Fi evolution. So given all this, now we come to this contentious issue for the future wireless, which is spectrum. So Wi-Fi, as most of you know, operates only in the unlicensed band. There is no plan to go to license. And in the unlicensed band, the 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and many countries have unlicensed 6 gigahertz. Luckily, we have universal coverage on 2.4 and 5. This also makes for a very good solution because when you put the chipset uh, with 2.4 and 5 RF support, it can go across the globe, okay? The same story is happening with 6 gigahertz. Countries which are not yet, which have not yet adopted are losing out on the fact that the hardware will be supporting or capable of supporting, but we are not able to tap into it. There have been efforts to bring 60 gigahertz, standards are there. In fact, I wish people take a look at why that has not succeeded before looking at terahertz or millimeter wave for even tougher applications. I think 
it will give a complex answer to the coverage, costs, etc. It still remains, in my opinion, a futuristic band for some niche applications. Time will tell how it will affect the market. There are also sub 1 gigahertz uh, IoT things coming up. Again, uh, we'll have to wait and see whether they will come integrated with some of our Wi Fi offerings. Now, do we need spectrum? That's the question from the, the next generation perspective. This is a study uh, done in one market, an advanced country market, where one gigabit per second goal uh, for indoor home, dense home environment. And you can see that large bandwidths are the way to go. Um, the reuse at which we can achieve good success for this one gigabit per second suggests that we need multi gigahertz, uh, gigahertz of bandwidth. Okay, so this is very important that it's not just cellular which is putting out studies. Wi-Fi also has done a lot of studies where the need for bandwidth from the perspective of futuristic usage. Now, what are people doing proactively? Remember, six gigahertz came from the developed world. Uh, they are going already to the next step. And I just hope that we are not late in this because we are already lagging behind on the six gigahertz. Now comes the next step. So whether the seven gigahertz will be the next unlicensed band or something else, time will tell. But I feel that we should keep an eye on this to see how we can align with the rest of the world. Now, what, what kind of drives the spectrum usage? This is a representative picture just for some indoor environment like home. I think many of these applications are already here and some of the most promising AR VR applications probably coming up are going to happen using Wi-Fi. So this is extremely important that as you know with the visions of a developed country to provide the citizens with the bandwidth and the facilities to use a variety of things like this, uh, we need the spectrum that you know Wi-Fi kind of technologies need to help us be in touch with some of the needs of tomorrow. And you must have heard a lot about the sustainability goals for the next generation. I think Wi-Fi fits the bill excellently because we are not blasting from outside, penetrating concrete. Uh, we enable you know, people to work from home, people to connect from home. This I'm sure contributes a lot to some of the goals from a sustainability perspective. It is ideal for the indoor connectivity and there are lots of power save mechanisms and this is something as I mentioned in Wi-Fi 8, there is going to be infrastructure power save which is going to come strongly. And so we need this wide channels in six gig and in the future bands to support all the needs of tomorrow's work, entertainment, healthcare, and so on and so forth. So I hope I have hopefully presented a case where we should involve Wi-Fi and the unlicensed band because it helps us achieve societal goals for meeting the indoor connectivity and application needs. And I'm sure that many of you will agree that those are very important as we move towards the developed country uh, sort of, uh, you can say goal and uh, with energy usage and sustainability and climate change becoming important, we cannot ignore um, the, the future applications of sensing, awareness, all these are going to spur new industries. And I wish that the cellular operators in this country also recognize, the regulators recognize that at least to start with, the world is aligned on six gigahertz, let's leave that and hopefully participate in the discussions for the next batch of unlicensed spectrum. And finally, what does Bharat 6G and Wi-Fi you know, have to do? So I think what people might not have understood is that we have a significant workforce contributing to the global Wi-Fi ecosystem. I invite you to participate in our Wi-Fi Knowledge Summit where you will see many of them. So this is something that our government and industry should tap to create Wi-Fi players who have the complete end-to-end -end, uh, capacity from India because we can produce sustainable solutions not just for the global market 
but we can produce solutions for local needs whether it's rural access or something very specific because once you produce a cheap uh, solution with non-licensed band you can make a lot of flexible products which can satisfy the specific goals of developing worlds and so on and so forth what should what can the alliance help uh, you know regulators and government i think we need to tell or we need to convince the government that this is equally important from an economic and flexibility and so on point of view we should participate just like we participate in the 3gpp we should have uh, ieee participation wi-fi alliance participation uh, as i said we should strive to have a wi-fi ecosystem and finally i would say being in an academic institution uh, i think there is plenty to do instead of being just 5g or 6g focused look at the scope for wi-fi in education thank you